greetings welcome to module 2 unit 12 on exit surveys in the last unit we understood the sub processes of implement phase in this unit we look at the design and use of exit surveys so the outcome for this unit is understand the design and use of exit surveys Exit surveys are administered at the end of an academic activity to get the subjective perceptions of students regarding the implementation of that academic activity. The academic activity can be a core course or a laboratory course or the laboratory component of an integrated course or an elective course, it could be a mini project or the major project. At the end of that academic activity, to get the subjective perceptions of the students, we administer an exit survey. Exit surveys provide valuable feedback to the instructor. Such a feedback is quite helpful in improving the quality of the learning, closing the quality loop. Based on the feedback, instructor can plan the necessary improvements next time the same activity is offered to enhance the quality of learning. Academic management systems AMS or learning management systems LMS may permit creation of summary student feedback report for an academic activity. It could be a built in feature of such learning management systems. If such a feature is available designing and administering an exit survey becomes much simpler. A key problem with surveys is getting valid survey data. This is a major challenge with any survey. There are several reasons why getting valid data is a tricky issue. Students may fear that they would be victimized if they give negative feedback. Often students assume that their feedback is really not important and that the process is a mere formality. Students do not have faith in the reasons for which the survey is administered. Often they believe that it is only to comply with some process that the survey is being administered. Their perception is that no instructor really makes use of this feedback data. Thus, they really do not consider this as any important activity. They tend to give the data which is not really what they are thinking. Sometimes even they may put random ticks in the survey form. The consequence of such indifference from the students is that the data that we get does not truly reflect the perceptions of the students. The length of the survey form may also influence the quality of the response from the students. Initially, students may respond enthusiastically, but as they move towards the later part of the survey form they may become apathetic. If the survey form is too long, it may not be able to hold the attention of the students all the way. On the other hand, if the survey form is too brief, we may not be able to get enough data to make really good use of the survey. Then what is the best size for the survey form? If it is too long, students may lose interest. If it is too short, we may not get reliable data and valuable data. So, what is the best size? There is no unique answer. Institutions have to experiment with survey forms of different lengths and arrive at a number which works best in their specific context. There are institutes which are using the exit survey forms with just about 10 questions. There are also institutes which are using exit survey forms with as many as 40 questions. An institute has to see what works best for its specific context. 
Another issue with the surveys is that many instructors feel that the data provided by irregular within quotes, irregular students has limited or no validity. So, they would like to restrict the participation in the survey to only students who have certain minimum attendance or certain minimum performance in the assessments. Now, whether one should allow all the students to provide feedback or whether one should have some kind of a filtering is a decision that the institute has to take. Unfortunately, there is no guaranteed way of getting valid survey data, but certain techniques have proved to be useful in getting more reliable data. We may have to use a combination of these approaches to get more reliable data. Some of the aspects which do affect the quality of the data that we get are discussed now. There is no guarantee that each method by itself would be sufficient. Again, the institute has to experiment and see what works best for its specific context. One important aspect about providing the data would be that the feedback provided electronically and anonymously is generally necessary to get valid survey data. Students tend to be more honest in giving the feedback if they know that the data is being collected electronically and their identity is never revealed. Thus, one of the important prerequisites for getting good quality survey data is to have the system whereby the feedback is provided electronically and anonymously. It may also be necessary to spend some quality time with students discussing the importance attached by the instructor to the survey data before collecting the survey data. Instructor can spend some time with the students, explain to the students that the survey data is extremely important for him or her and assure the students that he or she will make use of this data to enhance the quality of the learning next time the course is offered. It may be helpful if some typical instances of good use of survey data are presented to the students, perhaps at the department level. Three or four anecdotal incidents where the survey data was used to enhance the quality of learning can be presented to the students. This may increase the confidence that the students can have in the usefulness of the data that they provide. Several approaches may be necessary to get valid data as poor quality survey data negates the whole purpose of this process. Most institutions do have some kind of a feedback system. They use a student feedback form for all courses of all branches of engineering and have a standard mechanism of administering it and collecting the feedback data. Such a feedback form is typically used for evaluating the instructor. It is part of the faculty performance appraisal system. So, the main purpose of such a feedback system is to get data regarding the faculty performance and thus this may not be very useful for getting data regarding the academic activities. It is better to design a separate exit survey form for specific academic activity. So, it is good to design a specific survey form for core courses, a survey form for laboratory courses, a separate survey form for electives and so on. If it is absolutely necessary from the institute's perspective, such a separate survey form can be integrated with the institute wide common form. It is the choice of the institute whether it wants to adopt this policy of integrating the institute wide form with the specific survey forms. If it is feasible, faculty can administer a separate survey form. Now, let us look at 
the exit surveys for core courses. As noted in the earlier unit, mid-course surveys help the instructor to dynamically adapt instruction during the course delivery. Typically, one or two mid-course surveys are administered by the teacher and the data collected is used to modify the instruction as necessary. Course exit survey on the other hand is summative in nature, is administered at the very end of the course and is useful for improving the implementation when the course is offered again. Survey data may be used in computing indirect attainment of COs though NBA does not explicitly require this approach. The data collected from the exit course surveys can be used to compute the CO attainments indirectly. Several forms and approaches for course exit survey are available in the literature. What is presented here is just a sample framework. Individual departments can adapt their own specific feedback form based on their specific needs. The general topics that are covered in a course exit survey form would be about four. Course management, learning environment, course outcomes, instructor characteristics. If the instructor characteristics are being collected in a separate survey, if the instructor wishes, she can delete this aspect from the course exit survey form. But it is typical to include this aspect also in a course exit survey form. Typical questions are answered by the students on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being the most negative and 5 being the most positive. But other scales are possible. The form can start with an appeal to the student. Your considered feedback on the course will be of great value to the concerned instructor and to the department in enhancing the quality of learning. Thank you for your quality time. It looks like a very simple appeal, but there is considerable empirical evidence to show that such an appeal at the beginning of the exit survey form does have a psychological impact on the students. Often it leads to the students considering the survey more seriously. So, it is worthwhile to include such an appeal at the start of the survey form. Initial questions can elicit the overall view, rate the course in general on a scale of 1 to 5 for example, rate the course content, rate the instructor with reference to this particular course. Then there can be several questions related to the course management. How was the course organization? How were the internal tests conducted? Did the internal tests address the relevant COs appropriately? Were all the COs covered in the internal tests? What was the time allocated for the internal tests vis-a-vis -vis the questions that were you asked in the internal test? Was the time provided for answering the questions adequate? What was the quality of the quizzes administered? And what was the usefulness of assignments in promoting learning? Here again many students seem to feel that the assignments are not really contributing towards any learning. They feel that most of the time the assignment activity is proving to be a cut paste kind of activity and the instructors are not really evaluating the assignments. So, there can be questions about the usefulness of the assignments in promoting learning. What was the overall workload during the semester from this course vis-a-vis -vis rest of the courses in that semester? There can be other questions depending upon the specific requirements and context. Learning environment, we can have several questions regarding this important aspect. 
there existed positive interaction between students and instructor. Students were always allowed to interrupt the instructor to seek clarifications. Classroom discussions were encouraged and they were well moderated. Sometimes the classroom discussions can become real disruptors and the discussion can move in tangential directions disrupting the normal learning activity. It requires careful moderation from the instructor to ensure that the discussions remain focused. So, was that happening? That can be a question that can be asked in this survey. Required learning resources were easily available. So, there can be several such questions regarding the learning environment. Then course outcomes, we can have several questions regarding this as this is an extremely important aspect. Course outcomes were discussed up front, was that happening or the course outcomes were not at all provided or they were provided but just in a written form and they were not discussed in the classroom. So, one can have questions regarding the extent to which the instructor made efforts to make the course outcomes known to the learners course outcomes were clear. This is regarding the way the COs are formulated. How confident are you regarding the competencies expected from you? So, what is the level of attainment of COs from the perspective of the students perceptions? Instructional activities helped in the attainment of the COs. As we noted in an earlier unit, there must be good alignment between the instruction and the course outcomes in order to promote good quality learning. So, was that happening? Was there good alignment between instruction and the COs? So, we can ask a question, did the instructional activities help in the attainment of the COs? Time devoted to each CO was quite adequate. This is also related to the next question which is regarding the pace of coverage pace of coverage was comfortable throughout. It may happen that instructor spends unduly long time on the initial COs, the initial part of the course and thus finds herself faced with the problem of covering enormous amount of material in a short time towards the end of the semester. Thus, the pace can be quite uneven, relatively slow in the beginning and super fast towards the end. This may result in the earlier COs getting covered exhaustively while not much attention is paid to the later COs. So, there can be questions regarding the coverage of the COs as well as the pace of coverage. Assessments were relative to the stated COs. Again, as we noted earlier, alignment between assessment and COs is also essential for quality learning. In fact, alignment among instruction, assessment and COs is essential for quality learning. We have asked a question regarding the alignment between instruction and outcomes. We can ask a question regarding the alignment between assessment and the COs. Examples relevant to the COs were worked out well and also they were useful for examinations. This can be another question. Then we can ask questions with reference to specific COs. Rate each CO with respect to the comfort level you had in mastering it. So, 1 is the least comfort and 5 is the maximum comfort, highly comfortable. So, we can ask the rating for each of the COs. And if there is a consistently low rating for a particular CO, that would imply that most of the students had difficulty with respect to that particular CO. This would be an indication to the instructor that additional instructional activities may be required regarding that CO when the course is offered the next semester or next year. Then we can have questions on instructor characteristics also. As I mentioned, this is optional. If this is covered in a different form of a survey, the course exit survey need not include this aspect. Instructor had mastery over the content. 
all the students were treated impartially. This is regarding the attitude of the instructor. The instructor had excellent communication skills. The instructor encouraged the students to raise questions in the classroom. Technical doubts were clarified well. The general attitude of the instructor was quite supportive. We can have more questions. The classes started on time. The discipline in the classroom was well. All these kind of questions regarding the instructor characteristics can be included in the exit survey form. Then we can have some questions related to specific CEOs. These would be helpful in two ways. One is this data would help us in computing the indirect attainment of the CEOs. And the second usefulness is that it helps us in identifying sticky CEOs, the CEOs which need greater attention next time the course is offered. So, we can have some questions regarding individual CEOs. As an example, assume that CO3 of a course on algorithms is related to divide and conquer approach. Some questions specific to CO3 that the instructor can ask in the course grid survey would be as follows. How confident do you feel that you can determine if divide and conquer technique is applicable to a given specific problem? Not at all confident 0 to highly confident 5. Do you feel comfortable in deriving the time complexity of a given algorithm that is based on the divide and conquer approach? Again on a scale from 0 to 5, not at all comfortable to highly comfortable. How confident you are that you can explain merge sort algorithm? Not confident 0 to highly confident 5. How confident do you feel in developing a divide and conquer algorithm for a new problem? Not at all confidence 0 to very confident 5. Notice that these are all perceptions of students. The actual abilities of the students are being assessed through summative instruments including quizzes, tests and assignments. The objective of the survey is to get the perception of the students. Responses to such questions will provide valuable feedback to the instructor. Now, this data can be used for computing the CO attainment indirectly. That is a fairly straightforward approach which is possible. There are several methods possible. We will discuss one simple approach here. We asked four questions related to CO3 and assume that 65 students responded. Let us assume that for question 1, 6 students rated it at level of 1, 54 students gave it a value of 4 and 5 students gave it a value of 5. So, the average is 6 into 1 plus 54 into 4 plus 5 into 5, the whole sum divided by 65. The average becomes 3.8. So, on the average, for question 1, the response of the students was 3.8 out of the best possible value of 5. Similarly, assume that the average ratings for questions 2, 3 and 4 are 4.2, 3.9 and 2.6 respectively. These are just hypothetical numbers. So, the grand average now becomes about 3.6. The maximum possible value the best possible value is 5. Thus, we take the attainment of CO3 as 3.6 divided by 5 which is about 72 percent. So, we assume that the attainment of CO3 from indirect means is 72 percent. We can do similar computations for the other CO's. This is one fairly simple method for computing the indirect attainment of CO. But this requires that there be questions related to specific CEOs. So, the course exits form has to be designed based on the course itself. It cannot be one common form suitable for all the courses. For each course, a specific course exit survey form needs to be designed. 
and there should be provision for administering such an exit survey form. Then we can get data which will help us in computing the attainment of the CO indirectly. And as we mentioned earlier, this data is also useful in identifying particularly difficult CO's. Design a course exit survey form for a core course, a core course of your choice. Thank you for sharing the results of the exercise at nata.iacta at gmail.com. In the next unit, we will look at the design and use of exit surveys for elective courses, laboratory courses, mini projects and major project. The common features of all exit surveys have already been discussed in this unit and many of the questions that we asked in the exit survey for the core courses do hold for the exit surveys with respect to other academic activities. However, there can be certain questions which are unique to each kind of an academic activity. So, in the next unit, we will discuss the exit surveys for four kinds of activities, elective courses, laboratory courses, mini projects and major project. Thank you. We will meet in the next unit. Thank you.